Hello there! In this video, I'll be walking you through the process of modeling a tape measure in Inventor. Each time I complete a step in the video, hit pause, then do the step on your own model. If you make a mistake or get stuck, back up the video and watch a step again. Take care to click on all the same tools, lines, or surfaces that I click. Let's get started. First, create a new Inventor part file and perform a save as. Locate the file in the guided modeling class folder and be sure to name your file tape measure underscore last name. Once you do this save as, you won't have to do it again, but be sure to click save often so you don't lose any work. The first step is to model the housing. To begin, click new 2D sketch and select the front facing XY plane. Using the line tool, draw an outline like this one with a horizontal bottom, vertical sides, and a point somewhere along the top. Be sure the profile is totally closed, then we can start to add dimensions. Dimension the bottom edge to be 3.5 inches long. Set the left side to 2 inches tall and the right side to 2 and 1 eighth, or 2.125. Dimension the height of the top point to be 3 inches from the bottom edge and 2 inches from the left edge. Use the circle tool to draw a circle with its center on the right side line. Dimension the diameter of the circle to be 0.5 inches and dimension the center point to be 0.625 inches from the bottom edge. Now use the trim tool to trim away the outer half of the circle and the vertical line segment running through it. Click Finish Sketch. Click the Extrude tool and be sure your housing profile is selected. Change the direction of the extrusion to symmetrical and change the distance of the extrusion to 1.5 inches. If the preview looks right, accept the extrusion. Select the fillet tool, then set the size of the fillet radius to 0.125 inches. Select the edges at the top and bottom of the notch as well as the bottom right edge of the housing and click OK. Using the fillet tool again, set the fillet radius to 0.5 inches and click the bottom left, top center, and top right edges, then click OK. Change the fillet radius to 1 inch and select the top left edge, then click OK. And finally, set the fillet radius to 0.0625 and select both the front and back edges of the housing and click OK. At this point, you might want to apply a color to your housing. Click the color wheel at the top of the screen and select a color for your housing. Click the arrow next to the color to add it to your palette for this file. Then drag a box around all the surfaces of the part to select them and click the color of your choice. I'm going with a dark aluminum. At this point, you may want to change your visual style to get rid of some extraneous lines. To do this, click the View tab and the Visual Style menu, then select Shaded from the options. You'll notice that extra lines bordering the filleted edges are gone, leaving a smoother, more realistic looking model. Now would be a great time to save your work. Next, let's add a brand to our tape measure. Click New 2D Sketch and select the front surface of the part. Click the drop-down menu under the Circle tool and select the Ellipse tool. Click once near the middle of the part, then type 0.8 for the height radius of your ellipse, hit the tab key and type 1.15 for the width radius, and click enter. Finish the sketch, then click the extrude tool. Make sure the ellipse is selected, then change the direction and type of extrusion so the preview shows the ellipse cutting into the housing. Set the depth of the extrusion to 0.0625 inches and click OK. Now add a 0.0625 inch fillet to the edge created by the extrusion. Create a new 2D sketch on the extruded surface. Select the text tool and click near the center of your ellipse. Center the text in the window and type the name you want for your very own tool company. You can format this text however you like. Select the text, choose a font that looks good, and change the size of the letters to a height of 0.25 inches.
When you're happy with your text, click OK. Then reposition your logo so it's centered on the ellipse. When you're satisfied, click Finish Sketch. From the Create panel on your 3D Model tab, select the tool Emboss. Click Profile, then select your text. Set the depth to 0.01 and set the direction so that your text is engraving into the surface. Click OK to see your engraved logo. The Emboss tool has trouble with some fonts, so if you're not able to complete this step, try changing the font choice in your sketch. Open your color menu again and select a color for your text. I'm going to use dark gray for mine. I really want to use black, but black tends to hide object edges and doesn't show light and shadow very well, so dark gray is a good choice for this because you can still see the detail. View your part from the front view and drag a red box around all your text. Then click your chosen color. Now select a color for the flat ellipse surface that will contrast well with your text. I'm going to go with smooth yellow. Click the flat surface around your text and, if necessary, hold the control key on your keyboard and click any areas that got left out, like the center of O's, E's, or A's. When you have all your surfaces selected, click on your background color and close the color menu. This would be another good time to save. Now let's make the lock on the top edge of the tape measure. Create a new 2D sketch on the top right surface, then use the line tool to construct a profile that looks like this one. Try to avoid constraining your sketch to any existing lines or edges while you draw it. Add a dimension to make the profile 1.125 inches wide and 1.125 inches tall. Use geometric constraints to ensure that the top and bottom centers are centered from left to right on the part and centered with each other. Because of the direction our model is facing, you might need to use the horizontal constraint to do this instead of the vertical constraint. Dimension the vertical sides of the sketch to be 0.75 inches long and constrain the ends of the lines to be at even heights. When the sketch is complete, click Finish Sketch, then extrude the sketch into the part as a cut, 0.125 inches. To make the lock button, click New 2D Sketch and select the flat bottom of the new extrusion. Click the tool Project Geometry, then click the flat bottom of the extrusion. This creates an outline of this surface that we can snap lines to. Use the line tool to trace the bottom edges of the profile, but dimension the vertical lines to be only 0.25 inches in height. Draw in the angled lines at the top of the profile and constrain them to match the angle of the sloped lines at the other end of the extrusion. You might need to use the parallel constraint for this. When your profile is complete, click Finish Sketch, then extrude the profile out from the shape 0.25 inches. Then apply a 1 16th inch fillet radius to the outside edges. Now view the part from the front view. Open the color palette and drag a red box around all the surfaces of the lock button. Choose a color for these surfaces. I'm going to stick with the dark gray I used earlier. It helps if this lock button has a grippy surface. To create a grip pattern, create a new 2D sketch on the top surface of the button. Create a sketch profile of a grip pattern that you like. Position the profile near the top of the flat surface and only sketch one part of the pattern. Our next tool will copy the pattern several times to give us our grip. When you're happy with your profile, finish the sketch and extrude the profile 0.01 inches from the button. Now go to the Pattern panel in your 3D Model tab and select the Rectangular Pattern tool. Click Features, then select your new extrusion. Click the arrow under Direction 1, then select the front edge of the button. If the arrow is pointing up towards the top of the part, 
Click reverse direction so it points down toward the bottom. Choose a number of times to repeat your pattern as well as a good distance to spread them out. For mine, I'll repeat the grip pattern three times and separate the copies by 0.1 inches. The preview looks good and none of my grips are falling off the button so I'll click OK to keep them. I like the way this looks with the grips a different color than the button, but you can change the color of these surfaces to match if you want. Now would be a great time to save. Now let's make a portion of the tape sticking out of the housing. Create a new 2D sketch on the bottom right surface of the housing. Use the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle starting at the edge of the surface where the fillet begins. Dimension the rectangle 1 inch wide and 0 0.0625 inches high. If you're adding these dimensions as you go, use the tab key to switch back and forth between the height and width dimensions of the rectangle. Use constraints or dimensions to center the rectangle on the drawing surface. You can use the coincident constraint with the center point of the bottom line of the rectangle and the center point of the bottom edge of the drawing surface. Click Finish Sketch, then extrude the rectangle 6 inches out from the part. Now it's time to make the clip at the end of the tape, but to do this we need a mid-plane to make our sketch on. Click the drop-down menu under the Plane button in your 3D Model tab and select the option Mid-plane between two planes. Then click the outside surface of the tape, then rotate the part around and click the opposite surface. You should see a new work plane directly between the surfaces you clicked. Create a new 2D sketch and select this work plane to draw on. From the top corner of the tape, use the rectangle tool to draw a horizontal rectangle 0.25 inches wide by 0.03 inches high. Then from the top corner of this rectangle, draw a vertical rectangle 0.03 inches wide by 0.375 inches high. Click Finish Sketch, then use the Extrude tool and select both rectangles as your profile. Do a symmetrical extrusion and set your distance to 0.9 inches. At this point you can right click on the edge of the work plane you created and turn off its visibility because we won't be using it again. Place a 1 quarter inch radius fillet on the top corners of the clip. and a 1 8 inch radius on the bottom corners of the clip. And finally, put a 1 16 inch fillet radius on the corner of the clip as well as the end corners of the tape. Place a 2D sketch on the end of the clip. From the drop down menu under the rectangle tool, select the option Slot Center Point. Click once in the center of the drawing surface, then enter 3 16 as the dimension to the first arc center, click Enter, then 0.1 as the diameter, and click Enter again. Your slot should be centered on the drawing area, but if it isn't, use the constraints to center it. When it's all set, click Finish Sketch and extrude the slot through the clip. Now you can assign colors to your blade and your clip. Use yellow for the blade since most tape measures have yellow blades and any color you like for the clip. I'm going to stick with the dark gray that I used on my logo and button. Now the blade's all done. Time to save your work. Now let's make the pocket clip. To start, we're going to need another mid-plane, so this time click the work plane menu and select mid-plane between two planes, then click on the right and left surfaces of the housing to get a mid-plane that runs between them. Create a 2D sketch on this work plane. Start by sketching a circle. Dimension the circle to have a 0.25 inch diameter. 
use the tangent constraint to make the edge of the circle tangent to the edge of the housing. Now sketch a second circle below the first one, but set the diameter of this one to 3 16 of an inch. Use the vertical constraint to position the center of the second hole directly below the center of the first. Dimension the hole centers one inch apart. Draw a line from the right side of the top circle to the left side of the bottom circle, but try not to snap either end of the line to the snap points on the circles. Just connect it somewhere on the outside edges. Use the tangent constraint again to make the line tangent to both circles. Draw a vertical line from the lower hole center through the bottom of the circle. Draw another line from the left snap point on the top circle going straight down 0.5 inches. Use the trim tool to trim away the bottom segment of the top circle and the right side of the lower circle. You should now be looking at one continuous line that smoothly wraps around the two curves. Select the Offset tool from the Modify panel and click the line. Drag your mouse to the right side of the line and enter the distance 0.02 inches, then press Enter. Be sure to connect the ends of the two curved lines to create a closed profile, then click Finish Sketch. Extrude this profile with a 1 inch symmetrical extrusion. Then put a 1 16th inch radius on the bottom corners of the clip. Create a new 2D sketch on the flat outer surface of the clip and sketch a 0.5 inch diameter circle on the center of the surface. Finish the sketch, then extrude the circle through the clip. This hole is used to let someone attach or remove the clip from the tape measure with a screwdriver. Now you can add some color to your clip, and it's all done. Time to save your model. For a bonus, you can place a decal of a tape measure on the yellow portion of the blade. Search the web for an image of a tape measure looking directly at the blade, like this. Save the image to your computer, then create a 2D sketch on the top surface of the blade. In the Insert panel of your Sketch tab, select Image, then find the image saved on your computer and select it. You may need to move or resize the image to position the tape measure part directly over the blade. Once you have it positioned correctly, finish the sketch. In your 3D Model tab, in the Create panel, select the tool Decal. Click Image, then select the image you inserted and click Face and select the top surface of the measuring tape. Click OK and you should see the portion of the image with the measurements wrapped onto the blade of your tape measure. If the placement of the image isn't quite right, you can find the sketch under the decal operation in your model browser. Edit the sketch and reposition the image for a better fit. When you click Finish Sketch, you should see it update. Give your model one last save and it's all done. Congratulations on a great custom-made tape measure. If you think of any other creative details to add, give it a try. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.